Morning, Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, first of all, okay, we've got one hour to go and Plastic Paddy drops his masterpiece on the Kinahan Cartel. It's been a long and hard road for him and he's uh, worked endlessly, tirelessly and he's got the green light to go. It's go, go, go in an hour's time. Okay, and I'm not going to steal his thunder. I just want you to all tune in to Plastic Paddy at 11 o'clock. Okay, and this story's just dropped this evening. Europol strike deal with the United Arab Emirates to send a clear sign criminals like the Kinahan cartel leaders. International authorities are teaming up to close in on gang leaders like the Kinahan cartel bosses who are based in the United Arab Emirates. Europol has brought the United Arab Emirates further into the international policing fold as both organisations signed an agreement vowing a clear signal to criminals. The new deal provides EU authorities with access to crucial information that could help them close in on gangland criminals based in the Gulf state, such as Daniel Kinahan and his father, Christie Sr. What about Christopher Jr.? Under, under the A Liaison Officer Agreement, law enforcement officers from the United Arab Emirates will now have a permanent base at Europol's headquarters in the Netherlands. And also remember, right, the president of Interpol comes from the United Arab Emirates. So it doesn't look very good. It's not a good optic that if the president and the man in charge of Interpol comes from the United Arab Emirates and they are not within the fold. And I said this about six months ago. And I said that they needed to come into the fold. The United Arab Emirates is a key security partner in the fight against the most pressing criminal threats of today. Europol Executive Director Catherine de Bole said, I welcome this agreement which will mark a new level of cooperation in the international policing by connecting Emirati law enforcement with their counterparts in all of Europe's member states and partner countries. By doing so, we are sending together a clear signal to criminals. The deepening of links between the UAE and European member states is part of a clampdown on crime gangs like the Kinahans, who have already been hit by major US sanctions and asset seizures. The cartel was named as a top target of EU crime laws aiming to take down big and dangerous criminal organisations in May. They are very difficult to convict these specific persons. Eva Johansson, the EU Commissioner for Home Affairs, said at the time. But now we can make it possible in cases, for example, like the Kinahan cartel, where we have a huge cartel, but the bosses we have have been unable to really go after. They are acting in Dubai, in Spain, in Ireland, and in a lot of other countries, and they have been involved in drug trafficking, in firearms, in trafficking, in murders. Today's deal between Europol and the United Arab Emirates authorities is a milestone in international police enforcement that will bring forces closer. Gardi have already expanded their network into the United Arab Emirates with a senior liaison officer based in the country since July. This latest move will add pressure into the already beleaguered Kinahan organised crime group after leading members were sanctioned by the US government. 
In April, US law enforcement announced major sanctions against Christy Kenahan Sr., his sons Daniel and Christopher Jr., and others connected to the Kenahans. Johnny Morrissey, Bernard Clancy, Sean McGovern, and Ian Dixon. U.S. authorities have also offered a $5 million reward for information that would lead to convictions. We also revealed recently that after their assets were frozen in Dubai, the leaders of the Kinahan Organized Crime Group are said to be desperately trying to move their assets out of the Gulf state. UAE officials recently froze all assets belonging to key members of the Kinahan cartel following a wave of negative publicity after they were sanctioned by the US government. Ladies and gentlemen, please start your engines. And I think this is a wonderful introduction to Plastic Paddy's masterpiece about the rise and fall of the Kinahan Drugs Cartel, which starts at 11 p.m. UK time on the 23rd of September 2022 on Plastic Paddy YouTube. And now we move on to the mayhem that's going on in Liverpool. And I cannot tell you how many people from right across spectrum, the spectrum, have wrote to me, supporting me, and confirming what I've been saying is true. That Tommy Cashman murdered, brutally murdered, Olivia Pratt Corbell. And that Tommy Cashman has been aided and abetted, aided and abetted by Kayleigh Ann Sweeney, his partner of decades, Lee Hickman, who called Tommy Cashman on that fateful night, the 22nd of August, 2022, and told him that Joseph Nee was in the pub watching Manchester United versus Liverpool. The Co Street boss with Tommy Cashman, Murphy, and other people that facilitated in that brutal murder of Olivia Pratt Corbell. And people have also confirmed that Sean Zeiss is the number one suspect in the murder of Ashley Dale. And all these people are connected. You've only got to go, it's still there, Tommy Cashman's Facebook page. And then his friends is Sean Zeiss and his what most wanted brother, Stephen Zeiss. He's wanted on EncroChat charges of major drug smuggling, drug supply. And he's on the run, Stephen Zeiss. And they're all friends or they're all acquaintances. They all do graft together and sometimes they fall out. And also on Tommy Cashman's page are knees. The Knee family. Yeah, Joseph Knee was the target. See, one day you can be friends, the next day you're a target in that gangland world. And it's also been confirmed by many, many people right across the spectrum that the Canny Farm brothers, Vincent and Francis Coggins, the drugs godfathers of Liverpool, either ordered the hit on Joseph Nee or sanctioned Tommy Cashman to murder Joseph Nee. And of course, they, they would never for one moment even imagine that it would end up with the brutal murder of a nine-year-old child, Olivia Pratt Corbell. Of course not. There's no way in a million years they would even contemplate that. 
And even if it was suggested that something like that was a possibility, they would demand that it, it, it wasn't, wasn't carried out. I mean, let's be clear about this. Obviously, Vincent and Francis Coggins, okay, are international, global drug smugglers, okay, drug dealers, money launderers, of course, have got a huge cartel. Well, not a cartel, a huge organisation. And for 20 years, more, 30 years, they've been very, very quiet, unobtrusive. And whilst, you know, you can't justify um, drug dealing, but if ever there was going to be a model for godfathers who are quiet and unobtrusive, then the Coggins are the model for that. And I've always said that if we accept that drugs are going to be sold and that the best that law enforcement can do is manage the drugs industry of illegal drugs, then the public doesn't want to see or hear those people who deal in drugs. In other words, everyone should be quiet about it. No bling, no Ferraris, no diamonds, flash watches, no social media. that the rule book has to be rewritten for the illegal drugs industry. That it's a low profile cat and mouse game between authorities and those who deal in drugs, which goes on every day. But the golden rule must be going forward is that anyone who deals in drugs and is in that world does it very, very quietly and doesn't appear on social media and neither do their family and they don't buy bling and they don't go to nightclubs and live that kind of influencer social media high living and this means right to the top Daniel Kinnahan wants to be friends with celebrities, wants to have his name all over the newspapers, um, media, as the good guy he comes into boxing. And he flies too close to the sun like Icarus. And what we're about to see, okay, I want you all to just sit back and get the popcorn. But I'm sick of it. And if anyone's wondering, they think, oh, I might be trying to claim the reward or trying to get any of the reward money. Let me just tell you now, okay, for the record, if by any stretch of the imagination I was eligible for any reward money on the Olivia Pratt Corbell murder, I would donate every single shilling, pound, dime, every single part of it to break ground on the Dovecot Community Centre for Peace in the memory of Olivia Pratt Corbell. And I think that's the least that can be done, and I think everyone can agree on that. Okay? I want the first team of Liverpool and the first team of Everton to donate one week's wages for a community centre for peace in Dovecot in the memory of Olivia Pratt Corbell. And I want all the, the rich multi-millionaire Scousers to donate. So that the memory of Olivia Pratt Corbell doesn't just get memory hold, doesn't get forgotten. And we can remember Rhys Jones as well. That's something, that, something good that can come out of this. And that's not making comments on gangland or anything like that. That's building a community centre in Dovecot in the memory of Olivia Pratt Corbell. And not the government, because the government don't care and haven't cared for decades about Liverpool. This is something that Scousers can do themselves. All those rich Scousers, multi millionaires. So let's start with Paul McCartney, Kenny Delgleish, Stephen Gerrard. And I'm sure you can name them all. And the soccer teams, one week's wages, that's all I'm asking. One week's wages 
from the first team of Liverpool, the first team of Everton, to break ground. And any money that I was... It, well, there's no way I'm going to be eligible for any reward money. Don't be, don't be absurd. Everything I've said is already known by the police. But if by some stretch of the imagination, right, I was given a reward or offered a reward, right, for any work I've done on the Olivia Pratt Corbell murder, it goes straight into the fund to build the Dovecut Community Centre for Peace in the memory of Olivia Pratt Corbell. So this is going to be Art Hostage, episode 395. Art Hostage, signing off.